You're watching Macon T Sports Report on CHCO. And now, here's two guys who have been barred from entering every Canadian tire store from British Columbia to Newfoundland, Evan and Joe. I'm Joe Tykotsky down in New Haven, Connecticut. And I'm Evan McFarlane in beautiful St. Andrews, New Brunswick. And you're watching episode 53 of Macon T Sports Report. So tough with four ball handlers. On the floor right now for UConn. Nice pass. Inside they go to Hawkins. Good call to Grant. And Dutch, what a year he's had too. Curly and the Huskies have their dreams come true. How about that? You see, see, oh, how about those Huskies, <laughs> man? You, uh, you weren't a cheerleader in the day, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, oh, thank thank yeah. God. Yeah, yeah, that was that was awesome. It's good to see. I mean, Robbie's hoping that the girls can put on a little bit more of a run, but uh, the guys, like, I don't think many people saw that coming. But I thought I'd dig out the shirt for you that you gave me. I think the better part of a decade ago. That was uh, that was impressive, man. Um, but yeah, it was nice to see UConn win. Had a big parade in the state, and uh, now it's back to reality. Um, another basketball-related note: Zach Eady, who we had on the show, was named player of the year in college basketball by uh numerous organizations so we'd like to congratulate him and uh yeah it was a pretty impressive year for him yeah for sure and uh i think that's like you can just see how canada basketball is coming and he's just uh he's just proving it that we're we're not far off up here so look out <laughs> that's it every you when every look at rosters you do see a lot from canada um another former guest isabella Berthold, who we had a few uh, episodes ago uh, last month, she was part of the team that won Canada's first ever Sail Grand Prix event in New Zealand as her boat reached a top speed of 88 kilometers or about 55 miles an hour. Um, and I was reading the article and to show you how rare and unique it was for a Canadian team to win one of these international races. One team member was quoted as saying, to try and be a professional sailor and be Canadian is like trying to be a professional hockey player from New Zealand. Um, so it was uh, <laughs> cool. pretty interesting. Uh, and one other last interesting note, one of the sailors on board during the race wore a heart monitor throughout. And at the height of the race, they clocked his heartbeat at almost 200 beats per minute, um, which is sort of like yours when you found out our show was being renewed for a fourth season. Yeah, it's it's true. My my uh, smartwatch actually almost blew off my arm. <laughs> um, but going back to the show opening, we're going to reverse this time. As Mark mentioned, we've been barred in every Canadian tire store from BC to Newfoundland. Evan, for our American audiences, why don't you explain exactly what a Canadian tire store is? It's it's extremely disappointing news that I'm not allowed in them because uh, it's it's not just a place that you can get uh, tires at. They are pretty much the shop of everything. Uh, best spot to get kitchen supplies, oddly enough. There's always something like 90% off. <laughs> but you can get uh, car supplies, pet supplies, outdoor gear, sports equipment, home yes. renovation gear. It's it's. I, I don't know what the American uh, equivalent would be, actually. <laughs> um, hopefully not Walmart. No. Yeah, I, I remember the oh, first no, time I was no. up no <laughs> first time i was up there and i saw the name i'm like i don't need to go in there and i saw me just pop in and i'm looking for rows and rows of tires and all of a sudden i see everything in addition to but they got a big company for promoting local youth sports though they do a lot of that they have a, what they call is a jump start program so you can apply for funding for kids that may otherwise not be able to afford to play sports so they are really big in communities which is nice to see a corporation like that give back excellent and before we head to break, it's time to highlight another local business. And this time, we'd like to mention the Crocker Hill store. Oh, yeah. Okay. Built nice. in 1837 and located at 45 King Street in St. Andrews, owned by renowned New Brunswick artist Stephen Smith and his wife, Gail. Uh, it's a great place for those with a passion for gardening, birding, and art. They also sell pet supplies and a variety of chocolates so if you just if they sold tires it would be like a small version of, of canadian a classy small version of canadian tire um interesting one of the, 
one of the I cooler want... buildings outside in St. Andrews too. Like it's really unique to walk by and they always keep it in pristine shape. I think Steve's one of those guys that probably cuts his lawn with a pair of scissors. <laughs> they do. It is impressive. An interesting tidbit. First time I went in there, one of the owner's dogs is from Killingworth, Connecticut, uh, which is about 45 minutes from where I live. We're going to pop up a picture of them and the store. But all right, then. Well, after the sh this short break, we talked to an author of a very interesting just released book, which is sort of an odd guest for us to have since neither of us has read a book since the late 90s. Um, but I digress. You're watching Mick and T Sports Report on CHCO. Welcome back to Mick and T's Sports Report here on CHCO TV. Our first guest was a sports writer for over 30 years at the Edmonton Journal in Calgary Herald, and has also been the marketing and publicity director for Northlands Racetrack in Edmonton. After retiring seven years ago, he was inducted into the Canadian Horse Racing Hall of Fame, and his first book has just been released, titled The Turcots. The Remarkable Racing Story of a Horse Racing Dynasty. Joining us from Edmonton, Alberta, let's welcome in author Curtis Stock. Curtis, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Okay, as uh, most people know, Ron Turcott was the jockey of Secretariat. He had four brothers that were also jockeys. Now, after a long and distinguished writing career of your own, this is the first book you've ever written. Yeah. Um, why did you decide to write about the Turcot brothers and when did you start writing the book? I started writing the book uh, when COVID hit. I had the idea of writing the book over 20 years ago. It's just such a fascinating story of how five brothers from a lumberjack family in Drummond, New Brunswick went on to such great things and then unfortunately had some a lot of bad things happen to them. It's, uh, it's an engaging story and uh, part of it's really hard to believe to be true. It is. It is a, quite an interesting story. Um, Evan, you had a question for him? Yeah, I guess kind of to, to snowball just off how that, that ended. Um, a lot of people do know Ron Turcott just because of Secretariat, but maybe you could give us a, a brief story about uh, how he actually became a jockey. It was pretty amazing. Yeah, well, it's really amazing. Uh, he and uh, his good friend, Red Pelche, had left uh, New Brunswick to go to Toronto where they're where Ron's older brother Camille was working as a carpenter. But when they got to Toronto, there was a carpenter strike, so there was no work, and Camille was picking bottles. And Ron ended up picking worms at a cemetery and a golf course. And then uh, he was, they were both about to leave and, and go home back to New Brunswick when the landlord, when uh, Ron came down the stairs of the landlord's place that he was living in. And uh, the landlord was watching the Queen's Plate or the Kentucky Derby, the 1960 Kentucky Derby. And the landlord said, you know, that's what you should be doing. And Ron said, what? And he said, being a jockey. And uh, Ron said, what's a jockey? And the <laughs> landlord said, the little guys in the white pants. And then within two years, he was leading rider in Canada. Crazy. It is, uh, it is amazing how you can go from that. Uh, so you said he was, at, he was picking worms? Yeah, in a cemetery. I think they got uh, uh, $3 for a thousand worms. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. A lot of worms were to make $3. About a thousand dollars for three dozen worms now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Now, uh, I was given an advanced copy of the book right here. Oh, um, and I found it a, a, a great read. Just zip through it in five or six days, which is saying something for me. Um, but uh, there, there's triumph in the book throughout with he and his four brothers. But yeah. unfortunately, a lot of uh, a lot of tragedy also with it. Um, talk a little bit about the nonstop battle that a lot of jockeys face with keeping their weight down. Probably 90 percent of jockeys have to reduce. Uh, they, they don't want heavy riders because too much weight on a horse hurts a horse's chances. So. Uh, jockeys usually weigh, we'll probably check in about 115 pounds, but back in those days, they were even lighter and they wanted Ron to be 105 pounds and he weighed 128 when he came out at the lumber camps and, uh, Ron, 
didn't have to battle the battle of the bulge as much as uh, his brothers did. Uh, Rudy, uh, Noel, Eves, and Roger all had tremendous trouble keeping their weight down, especially Eves, who weighed 135 pounds. And uh, they would wear uh, rubber suits and and run for miles and they'd sweat in saunas and they would take diuretics to get rid of all the last bit of water in their bodies. And a lot of jockeys are bulimic and it, it's a tough life. Yeah, and then the, the, the brothers, there was a lot, there was tragedy within the family, correct? Uh, it certainly was, yeah. Like Ron in 1978 was paralyzed from the waist down in an accident in New York. Uh, Rudy, uh, unfortunately, was an alcoholic um and he had the weight problems put an end to his career noel and roger both committed suicide and ease was a top rider in alberta and he got hurt in a spill in 1999 and he had to quit riding mm, tough tough life uh, yeah. evan, evan you have one yeah. more we um, were uh, fortunate enough to interview ron in 2001 and you could just you could tell like most uh, New Brunswickers, how proud he is to be from, oh, from this yeah. amazing province that we live in. But I just maybe what are some of the things that the town has done to kind of honor his legacy? Well, Grand Falls has a statue of both uh, Ron and Secretary. Uh, Secretary, of course, being the greatest horse of all time that Ron rode to the Triple Crown victory in 1973. But mm -hmm. when we went to visit Ron in New Brunswick and we were at the uh, hotel lobby. There must have been 20 people around him asking for his autograph and just wanting to talk. And we went to dinner and two boys, it couldn't have been more than 10 years old, came up and asked for his autograph. And cool. then uh, two ladies from Kentucky knocked on his door. They'd driven all the way up from Kentucky to ask for his autograph. And Ron gave him a signed autograph of uh, the iconic 1973 Belmont, when he, which he won by 31 lengths. So he's awesome. he's very revered in New Brunswick, as are as are all the Turcots. The Turcot name is is very big in New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's great that they still remember and honor him. Um, lastly, I was fortunate enough, just on a whim, to visit Ron Turcot in his home this past January, and spent about thirty minutes just chatting with him in his living room. Found him to be a very soft spoken and gentle man. A gentle man with an amazing memory for detail. And when we started talking about Saratoga, oh, yeah. and as we started talking about Saratoga racetrack and he was picking out details of yeah. stores that were in the area. Um, uh, on another note, is he bitter at all about the accident, uh, about the accident that paralyzed him? No, it's, it's unbelievable. One of the last uh, lines in the book is that uh, he thanks God every day that he can open his eyes. Um, he, was hoping that he would be able to walk again, but of course he never, never was. But uh, I asked him if he was in a lot of pain and he said, uh, that would be complaining and I don't complain. Mm -hmm. And he was very good to his brothers in terms of, Oh yeah. Um, you know, helping him out a little bit financially and, and, you know, Oh yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. When he was doing well, he would send, uh, he sent one time, he sent uh, three horses back to uh, New Brunswick for, uh, Rudy and Roger and uh, Eves and uh, uh, Noel to ride. Uh, they were horses from New York. Uh, he would send bicycles and gifts and come back and, at Christmas time. But uh, he paved the way for, for Noel for sure. I mean, uh, Noel followed Ron two years later and, uh, and he introduced him to the same trainers and, and owners that he had been involved with and that he was riding for. Great. Well, well, he is Curtis Stock, author of the recently released book, The Turcots, The Remarkable Story of a Horse Racing Dynasty, out on Firefly Books and available online or wherever you get your books. And we encourage you to maybe hit an independent bookstore and pick it up. Um, <laughs> Curtis, first, thanks for being on the show. And second, your book just tells the backstories of things you don't even think about in the horse racing industry from jockeys going over videotapes to yeah. you know, learn strategies and then just your for a first book it was uh i hope you write a few more because it was pretty impressive <laughs> i don't know this one took a long time to write so <laughs> there you go well thank you very much for being on the show and sharing the fascinating story of the turcott family 
Well, thank you for having me. My pleasure. Well, coming up next on Small Town Spotlight, we totally change gears and head about an hour south of where Ron Turcott currently lives to talk about potato chips. You're watching Mick and T Sports Report on CHCO TV. Welcome back to Mick and T Sports Report. It's time for Small Town Spotlight, and for this episode, we stay right here in CHCO's home province of New Brunswick, about two hours north of our studios, as we head to Carlton County in the rural community of Waterville, right near the main border and not far from the world's longest covered bridge located in Heartland. In just five minutes from that covered bridge is, you guessed it, the Covered Bridge Potato Chip Company, a fourth generation family business. And to tell us everything chip related, let's welcome in Megan Collins, marketing manager for the Covered Bridge Potato Chip Company. Megan, welcome to the show. Hi, Joe. Thanks for having me. All right. Now, originally, you're from the area. You've been the marketing manager for five years. But briefly, tell us about your first jobs with the company. Yeah, so I was fresh out of school, had just moved back to the area, and um, I knew a girl who was working at the company. I got an interview. I actually started the afternoon after my interview. <laughs> they needed help right away. Um, and I started working half days down in the warehouse, pulling orders, loading transports. And, um, and then the other half, we were just kind of getting started with online sales. So we had launched our online store on the website and we had, I mean, we weren't shipping very much online back then. It was probably like 15 orders a week. Okay. And, um, yeah, that was kind of what I was doing in the beginning days. And now we have so many more people working for the company. And since yeah. COVID, the online sales have quadrupled. Okay. Now, how many uh, Canadian provinces and territories are the chips sold in? So we're in all of the provinces in Canada and uh, no territories at the moment. Okay. And how about in the U.S.? Any places that are they're available in the, in the States? Yeah. So we have uh, distribution in two states, uh, Connecticut and also in Texas. Hold it. Hold is, it. Uh, Connect, Connect, you sell it in Connecticut? Yeah, in Connecticut. Okay. Um, we up. have one distributor there. Okay. Very nice. That's interesting. Connecticut and Texas. All right. Um, this is the <laughs> question I'm sure people always say. What makes a covered bridge chip different than a national brand such as Frito Lays? Well, um, we use homegrown dark russet potatoes, which is a lot different than most leading brands. Um, a lot of them are using white potatoes, cut very thin. Um, we leave our skin on our potatoes, so it just adds to that flavor. We also are kettle cooking our chips, so that's it's kind of different. We batch make them rather than just a steady frying line. Okay, nice. Yeah. Now, back back in the day, uh, your potato choices or mine were typically limited to a plain chip, a plain chip, or maybe a plain chip. Um, but time <laughs> times change, and uh, how many different flavors does Covered Bridge sell? So we're sitting right around a 20 flavor mark at the moment. So there's quite a few options. Um, you know, we've got creamy dill, homestyle ketchup, jalapeno, uh, sweet and spicy jalapeno. Okay. And then we've been innovating with our mixed bags, which is quite popular. Now you have a Donair flavor. Now, most of our American audience doesn't even know what a Donair is, but what, what's the Donair flavor actually? So, well, the Donair flavor is based off Donair sauce, which is a maritime thing. Um, it's a creamy, vinegar, garlicky sauce. So that's that's the flavor nice. profile. Now, what are your favorite flavors? Uh, I really like our crinkle cheddar. It's a very it's a very tasty flavor, and also the mega 
we have a mega mix it's called it has three flavors blended into one so it has all dressed vinegar and uh, our smoking sweet barbecue in it so it's very it's very good well, if you're if you guys are looking for a new flavor, we always want to suggest something maybe in honor of our show, like talk show chips, or um, <laughs> it would, and my co-hosts would say that would, those would be very plain and lacking in taste. Um, but uh, now I'm assuming not all chip flavors succeed. Um, which ones have been taken off the market due to either low sales or production issues? Montreal Steak Spice, Sloppy Joe, Loaded Hot Dog. They were some flavors that have come and gone. Um, you know, with new innovation, you have to make make space on the shelf. So you have to pull some of those older flavors that aren't necessarily keeping up with the top top sellers. Sloppy Joe's hit to the gut right here. <laughs> Uh, and lastly, tell us the story of your company's famous storm chips and how they came about. Pretty, pretty neat story. Yeah, so there was a radio host out of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Her name was Stephanie, and she was the first one to kind of, she tweeted and hashtagged Storm Chips, and it just went viral. And our marketing team, you know, realized, hey, like, this is something we need to get on board with. So we knew we couldn't come out with a flavor, you know, in a couple of weeks, but we jumped on and trademarked the um the saying so that we could we could get to work on producing something for the following year so my first winter with the company we launched the storm chips in 2015 in november now was just those been, just, are those different bags within a big bag or are all the chips mixed into one bag yeah so a lot of people think it's four different bags in one bag but we actually we produce each flavor separately um, set them aside and then we blend them together on a blending table after and so it's kind of like chip roulette you're not sure which chip you're going to get okay so who's yeah. in charge like there's some some young kid like throwing here's a barbecue here's a salt <laughs> I'll, I'll produce but uh that's uh yeah I, i've had those and i remember the first time i saw them when i was up there and i had no idea what they were and uh it's interesting to know the backstory of it. Um, well, she is Megan Collins. She's the marketing manager for the Covered Bridge Potato Chip Company. Uh, Meg, Meg, thanks so much for coming on the show and telling us about your product. Yeah, no, thanks for having me, Joe. It's a pleasure. Well, the Covered Bridge Potato Chip Company, located right in New Brunswick, sells their amazing potato chips and seasoning for those chips as well, in addition to popcorn and a product called Leela Chips, which are chip pea chips named after the Albright family's great Grammy Leela. Are those fairly new? Uh, we launched those a year ago, uh, so pretty new, yeah. Okay, nice. Plus, they also have a, a bunch of great swag that they sell. You can find all this at coveredbridgechips.com, and they ship all over the place if you'd like to order. They also have Twitter, Instagram, and yes, TikTok accounts. Uh, so check on those. And if you're in the area, they also offer factory tours, and they have a great on-site store. And uh, I always like to bring some of your chips back home and may or may not have had to offer them to the border guards at the crossing in Maine to maybe help me get out of a dicey situation in the past, but that's a story for a different day. Um, Meg, the chips are great. And thanks so much for being a guest on the show. What the, what's going on there? You have these? <laughs> we don't. <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to send you a case. Man, these are awesome. <laughs> okay. The covered bridge chips from the store. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. No, I didn't know we were coming back that quick. Sorry. Um, speaking of snacks, I recognize that T-shirt you were wearing. <laughs> yeah, it's the Krispy Kreme Donuts T-shirt, which uh, I, when I had my heart surgery almost four years ago, I was considering wearing that into the surgery, but <laughs> figured no need to be a wise guy uh, on the operating <laughs> table. Um, yeah, for sure. But so uh, shout out, I will go with my niece, Tessa, who just celebrated her 22nd birthday. Tessa, you get more mentions on this show than 
local local celebrities uh no kidding we have to start paying our royalties <laughs> there we go but, uh, um but, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a quick one too joe speaking of your uh, your card operation that you had uh four years ago i guess to this month is when you and i were both going through a mess so you want shout out shout out to us yes sir we'll take here it. we'll we are take on the other side <laughs> you're still here uh well that's it for episode 53 of mick and t sports report i'm joe in new haven I'm Evan here in St. Andrews, New Brunswick. Come golfing. We're opening on Friday. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks to Patrick Watt and Florence Mitchell for producing and editing a show that millions of mothers throughout Canada watch each night to help put their babies to sleep. <laughs> saw that coming. So yeah. until next time, this is McIntyre Sports Report on CHCO-TV in St. Andrews.